Okay, now we're recording. Seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call the uh, November 29th, 2023 meeting of the G uh, Governance Organization and Legislation Committee to order uh, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107 of the Acts of 2022, and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be held via remote means. Members of public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay, and members of the public can access the meeting via Zoom or by telephone. Uh, I'm going to call on each counselor to make sure that they uh, can hear and be heard. Welcome, Lynn. Uh, Mandy Johanneke. A present. Uh, Jennifer Taub. Present. Lynn Griesmer. Present, sorry, I was late. Yeah. That's okay. Pat DeAngelis is present and Michelle Miller is not attending today. Um, so Paul, is is he in the audience? Yes. That's he is. Yeah, well, why don't you? I'm bringing him in now. Okay, great. Good morning, Paul, and thank you. Um, we're going to get started right away on trying to uh, work on the policy goal and goals for your evaluation. Uh, there are longer term questions that I want to add to the carryover menu about how we time it and structure and things like that that can happen next year with the new council. But right now, I really would like as much input from you, Paul, as possible in how we go about um, doing the, you know, really doing the goals. Um, we are trying to find a way to balance um, the broader policy and in a certain sense, the five-year policy with the specifics um, that we want to have accomplished without doing things like make a list of the trucks that have blue headlights and that can be done and checked off. That doesn't just doesn't really have a lot of value. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to open it to all of you. Um, there are tens of documents in the packet to look at um, if you want. Um, Do you want me to bring up the goals so you can? Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. And we're, we're doing the new format, correct? Yes, more, yes. Now there is a document in the packet where I started to go through this and add comments from other counselors. Um, I got a lot of material very late, so that, you know, yesterday, um, and so, and that's not complete, but I guess, Paul, what, <laughs> what I, I know, I have a real sense of what you want, but what do you see as the best process going forward? Um, or anyone else, but I, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't know there was a new version, so I'm gonna grab that. No, that. it isn't the full. Uh, Go ahead, if, if uh, you can do that if you want. It's, um, let me see which one it is. Um, uh, let me see. No, maybe it's not. Uh, it is, let me see the, here's the thing. I believe it is the, um, It, it was titled GOL Review oh, Town, Town Manager Goals. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. I'll bring that At up. At least I think that's yeah. the one that's referring to. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I'm hope, hoping this is helpful. Um, that one doesn't so, seem to have my stuff in it, but that's okay. I'm here. No, I didn't get to that. You know, I started, it doesn't have Kathy Shane's. It doesn't have yours. Uh, but I also knew that you would be here. One of the things is I have trouble um, figuring out how to get track change documents in here and stuff. I apologize. Um, so these were, um, the blue here is Pam Rooney, but I want to go through this in some kind of order. Um, 
And again, I want to go back to Paul um, to get a real sense of how what you would like to work from, what's actually valuable to you. And yeah, so what's valuable to you? What actually makes you consider what you're doing? And yeah, so thanks, Pat. Um, so I think what's valuable, what I what I appreciate about this is that there's consistency from last year's goals. Like that you, in essence, these are sort of like updated goals from 2023. And I think that that's an important feature that the council should be, th I, th I mean, this is a longer term discussion, not for today necessarily, but the council should be thinking in two, two year chunks, I think, um, in terms of goals. And I, w when the new council forms, it sort of takes the goals and says, you know, what are the goals for the coming two years? Because I think we it's much easier to think in that time frame. because what happens is that when we set the goals, I guess, establish say January, um, and then we're being evaluated nine months later. And it's always, you know, I always have to put that caveat in there. Oh, we're still, there's still three months to go and we can still do more. So I think, um, and I think the, the idea of um, updates along the way is something that council has, has asked for. And I think there's different ways we can do that. We can do that with like a specific time frame on a council agenda or it can be incorporated in different ways in the uh, town manager report where um, I don't want to get, I don't want that to be like a mm. cut and, you know, cut and paste every week. It, it, right. no one, it'll get boring, but calling out certain things, something like that. I think the goal, because of the consistency, I think the goals are, are pretty understandable. I like that you've pared them down and made them more um, general um, in terms of what you want to see happening um so you know I, i'm i'm pretty comfortable with where you are on most of them i think the idea was <clears throat> um you know that um you know one of the things i one of the, the the options one of the things that some communities do is to say if you had one goal as a counselor if you had one thing that you wanted to get done or you thought was the most important thing what would that be and then, and then, and then say, and then, what's your second thing? If there were, if you were allowed to pick two things, and have have each counselor choose, you know, make that determination, and and to try and really, this is a comprehensive document. It doesn't really prioritize what you really, really care about. And I think that that would be, I don't know if this, if the council, if this council um, is wants to put the time in because it's a, you know, this council is going to term pretty soon. Um, but I think that kind of exercise is really the, the process seems to be, let's not forget to put this in the document. Let's not forget to put that in the document as opposed to really setting the priorities for the town. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of this is going to, it is going to be in the carryover mem memo, Paul, because this is something I think that the council needs to work on. Mm -hmm. um, and and the council referred to GOL the the process right. so right. that'll that'll be on the agenda for the carryover and on the agenda for the coming yeah. okay and so Lynn yeah so I I think it would be best if we proceed with this goal document coming from this council and then early in the next council we take the document and in each goal, try to say what's short-term, what's long-term and even put some, you know, if it's, if it's comfortable, say this is over the next two years, this is over the next five years or whatever the case is, but that we not try to do that with this group. Yeah. With this council. Thank you, Lynn. Jennifer. Um, yeah, I agree with Lynn, and I guess I've I think it's a really um, helpful suggestion, and it it's logical and makes sense, and that we have two year goals, and I think that's part of what we've been struggling with. You know, how do you accomplish in nine or twelve months? So the only thing I'm concerned, and I think it's a good idea to to have this conversation early in the next council, just trying to be conscious of that we don't. So if we were to do two-year goals at the beginning of next year, that would still allow the council that comes in two years later to have goals. 
I, you know, just don't want to be setting goals for two years that make it so the first year of a new council mm -hmm. session, you know, they don't really get to set their own goals. You, no, I think you'd want to align it with the elections cycle. Yeah, yeah. right. So that's what we'd, but I think it's a good idea if we could, I mean, if there's time to do it with the new council, but that eats into the 12 months, Why? Right? but I guess if we're doing two-year goals, well, that also would make sense then, right? Because if you have yeah. two-year goals, if you don't get your goals till mid-February, that's kind of okay. And, and then I think, and if I can jump in. Um, Please, I think, just do it. I think the um, idea then is you don't, don't go, go through another goal-setting process every year. It's every other year. And then you do, do a freshen up, you know, in the, in the, like at this time, a year from now, you do a freshen up, like, you say like what what's are there any things that we've accomplished we can take out that we want to adjust or anything like that or new new things come up all the time so you might want to adjust them i think that makes sense i don't know yeah Mandy? It might, nope. go ahead paul it, it just might help the council manage its time better too because these are this is a pretty important doc it's a very important document and it you put a lot of time and effort into making it a good document yeah mandy I didn't have my hand up. I know, but I know you're throwing <laughs> away at something. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know what I think. Um, we spend a lot of time on it. In a way, I don't know how useful the time we spend on it is, which is why I'm struggling with our, is the new council going to spend the first six months of the year talking about goals or the first three months of its term talking mm -hmm. about goals, right? Um, for the manager, not for the council. Um, Cause I think, I think the council in the five, five years has struggled with both. Um, we still struggle with, and we seem to have the same conversation every year, how specific, how not. Pat, I liked your analogy of maybe we shouldn't be putting in, create a list of all the trucks with blue headlights, right? <laughs> in a, because that's not really a CEO job, right? Um, what what are we asking our CEO to do? They're a manager. You know, what are we asking our manager to do? To me, that seems more broad. Yet every year when we try to go broad, everyone, including myself, wants more specifics in it, right? <laughs> on certain areas on their pet projects. And how do we manage that difference with 13 people? In some sense, what Paul said about does everyone just get two, no matter whether we like them or not, right? You know, because I may not like ex counselors too. They may actually be contradictory to my two. Um, or does everything in here need seven votes? I, I don't know what the solution is to something that Paul can actually work with. Jennifer? I guess I thought of when Paul said each counselor would, you know, maybe have their first and second priorities. And I mean, it may be time consuming, but then we discuss it. I mean, you didn't automatically get your top two <laughs> for just the reason you said. I mean, if nobody else shares those as priorities, but that, that that was just a place to start. Is that what you, is that correct, Paul? Yeah, it, it was a way to focus the counselor's um, priorities and say, what do you really what is you got elected a couple months ago and like, what do you really want to accomplish in your next two years? What is the top thing that you, you at the end of your two years, you're going to go back and say, I'm glad I got that done. That's this is my top priority. You might have 17 different priorities, but this is the one or the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and then you have to talk about them together as a group. Right. And that, again, is for the new council. Yeah. So sticking right now with the current document, what are what are the steps, Lynn? Yeah, I uh, maybe this is what we're already saying, and that is that I believe that we need to have some level of sense that these goals won't change dramatically every two years. Okay, what may change somewhat either because time has elapsed and some parts of the goals have been achieved is the prioritization on those goals. And what I'm hearing people say today is let's get the goals down and then through a process of, you know, facilitated discussion and ranking have the new council say, 
collectively, not individually, but collectively, here's the top goal, the second, et cetera, but also look at it in terms of short-term and long-term. Mm -hmm. That's, yes. yeah. Okay, because I, I don't think, you don't want to know what every, if, if all 13 counselors say, here's my first and second goal, and they don't mesh, then you got a mess on your hands. So somewhere in here, there has to be a negotiation process among the council as to what are, what do we believe are the top goals? But we also need to do that in light of short-term and long-term. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mandy? So if we go that route, then we need to use... I think our our even sub goals within you know climate action or community health and safety have to be more management word focused. So propose, but in general terms, not you know um, implement policies, but not specific parts of policies. Giving the manager, and then when he writes his self evaluation, he tells us which part of those policies he's done, or you know, to take climate action as an example here, use a climate lens when making these, that's not like not telling them what type of climate lens, right? And then it won't need to change year over year over year. And he just then reports how he used that climate lens and in what decisions and all of that. And then we review him on whether we think that was a sufficient use of climate lens um, or an appropriate use or in the right areas. Um, if we're not looking to change them dramatically year over year, then, you know, this, again, going to climate action number two, complete JPE formation and implementation of CCA upon approval might be a little bit too specific, but maybe not. Maybe that one hits sort of right in the middle. Um, but then that, Pat, what you said on sort of a, a another list, create X program for the website is probably too specific because that's much more of a checkbox than a here's your guide. Right. Um, it also, I'm going to jump in for half a second, Jen. Jen, I'm, I'm wondering whether as we do this, because with the current council, there is, there is agreement on what the goals are right now. So I'm trying to figure out how to get this document done, as well as prepare ourselves to work with the new council. I'm wondering whether the list of specifics that we often sort of intertwine couldn't be separate lists, uh, something called, I don't know, possible actions or or something because right now I feel like a lot individually and I noticed it more this election year, people are just trying to get things in there. And and what is it that we really need to look at when we evaluate the town manager? And what do we need to own about the policies that we create and are working to implement? Jen. I, I know I sound like a broken record, but I, there are certain, you know, big undertakings, major undertakings that require a lot of staff time mm -hmm. that the town manager has said we, you know, asked us to call out. Like, I think community choice aggregation was that. That was took a lot of time and the waste hauler bylaw that if we don't call those out, then the town manager doesn't know how to, you know, what he, he that's important in planning staff time and resources. Yes, so I, think, I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. And and it feels to me like those action items, may, and people can disagree, feel like the, the, there are a lot fewer of those in actuality than what we list. And, right. But we have to list those and we probably don't need to list. And But we need to right. find, at least in this committee, some agreement about what those things are. Anyone? Uh, Paul? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because we're looking at council goals and then town manager goals, and right. they should be in alignment, which is what we always hope for. Um, and because I think, you know, the council goals should, you know, that, that's the whole point of the council establishing goals for itself and for the town. You're the ones who set those policy goals. Um, and then it should migrate into what are the what how are we going to judge the town manager to, on making progress on each of these goals and i think as i was thinking about it like a five-year plan is actually a better 
better than two years because these shouldn't change dramatically over time. There might be something that new new that comes in that's brand new that we have to address. But um, you know, I think settling on a five or six year plan actually we sort of do that. We do that for um, our capital planning and we look at things in that kind of increments. So it might be wise to think about those things as as we try. I think it's, we've been really working hard, um, and Sean was really good at, at trying to align all of our documents, our financial documents, our budgets, all these things to sort of really pull it together so we can everything gets referenced to the next thing. Um, <clears throat> and I, you know, we're not the only ones doing this. There are other communities doing this. Um, I've got uh, Chatham and I've got Lexington's. They both have just completed processes. I can share share with you the information. I, they have. Um, I put Chatham and I put Falmouth in the packet for people to look at. Okay, good. And yeah. And I just got Lexington. So they just finished theirs. Uh, where are we going, folks? I feel like we should just start going through it. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like you have two topics. One is to get this document done and before the council. And then the second is like, some suggestions for how to move forward next time. Right, so. right. So let's, let's, <laughs> I, Jennifer? <laughs> well, I just wanted to ask, are the Chatham and Lexington in this week's packet or previous week? I put them in this week. In yes. SharePoint? Yes, in oh, SharePoint. Oh, in SharePoint. You put them in SharePoint, but you didn't, okay. you didn't let me know to, to put them online. Ah, so I'll, I'm I'll doing do that. that again. See, I, what I, my earlier comment before we started is right there. I'm just going <laughs> to, I apologize. I'll SharePoint Sorry. look. Yeah, I always do that. I, yeah. Um, so one of the things, I'd like us to go through this document now. If we could, I mean, there was a friend of Paul's who commented that the last paragraph that kind of says he doesn't have to do any of this but <laughs> I, I read it a little differently <laughs> but I like your friend mm -hmm. can you scroll um down like to climate action we've done changes there and I think we were in agreement with those I had one more to add to climate action okay and go ahead man well uh, it, it, and Jennifer so it, it was just a, I, I put it as number four, but it could be number five. I just didn't want to move the and. Um, and it it references, it's one of the things that for this and housing, I put the same thing in. It I worded it as ensure the town can fully utilize state and federal funds targeted at sustainability initiatives. That was the concern about, do we have enough staffing or do we this or that? And, and I didn't include it as hire more staff to do so because I, I was trying to do more general. I don't know what Paul thinks of the wording of this, but more of a general, um, we need to ensure that we're not leaving easy money on the table through whatever means you think is the best to do that, Paul sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um. Paul, your reaction? Yeah, no, I, I know that I, I see that as a, um high value and something we're, we're actually quite struggling with um, because there isn't, excuse me, um, unless we contract with somebody, uh, there's nobody readily on hand uh, that has that kind of expertise, but other communities are going through the same thing. We happen to have somebody in town who's pretty good at this for schools. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a, a, a solid goal. And uh, are people comfortable with this? Can we just work on consensus with what Mandy has suggested? Yeah, good. Yeah. And nods, thumbs, I don't care. Jen? Yeah, this may be too specific, but the one um, I had added is, you know, in addition to the pay as you throw in the solar bylaw is the heat pump program for residents and utilization of the PACE program for multifamily and business retrofits. I don't know if that's too specific, but that's something we've talked about as also part of our, you know, kind of affordable housing or or just housing to have, um, you know, energy efficiency. But maybe that <clears throat> could be part of, since it's part of the PACE program, is comes under using <clears throat> state and federal sustainability initiatives. Would that be included there? Uh, I think actually under number five, the new five CARP. Um... That's where mm -hmm. all those things are incorporated into the CARP. Right. So, so therefore, does it really need to be listed since it's in the CARP program? 
uh, program, I'm sorry, policy. So that's actually a question for Paul. Should yeah. that be called out or just, yeah? I mean, I think that I'm interested to know. Yeah, I, I think identify the CARP is the, is the, pro, is the um, plan that you've already said yes to. And so then it's just right. And what this is saying is like, now do it. Um, and start to, and I think it gives some leeway in terms of like, maybe pace isn't the most pressing thing. Maybe it's something else that Stephanie says, this is where I want to put my time this year instead of on that thing. And heat pump is one of those projects that we're really pushing on. So. Okay. Does that feel comfortable, Jennifer? Yes. <laughs> okay. No, I want to, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Asking this question. All right. Shall we move to community health and safety? Can you scroll up? No, I forget why. Oh, I put this in green. I don't know why. I like the color combination, I guess. Uh, all I did was reorder what we had uh, because I felt like, you know, we had Cress here and police here. And so I just reordered. And the comments in blue um, are, were put in by Pam Rooney, who's uh, so... Mandy, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. So, um, I I had a couple of comments and changes on this one too. Good. Um, I had actually proposed deleting the review and update policies of the Amherst Police Department. Um, I know it's not done yet, but thinking about that, that um, general or specific, right? Um. How specific are we going to get? I, I feel like review and updating of policies and protocols in general should be something covered under the management goals, something that is done in every department every so many years. Um, and does it need to be called out specifically? So so I just bring that up as a question of do we need to call it out specifically? Um, the re resident oversight board, I actually reworded the town council, I don't think, has ever voted except through the manager goals to create a resident oversight board. Um, and with the new post commission and all, there is a question, I believe, Paul might be able to speak better to this, as to how a resident oversight board is different, not, not necessarily necessary, but different and, and what it can do in addition to or outside of what the post commission at the state level does. Um, and so I had, the, I, I proposed a new wording for it, um, investigate and report to the council the bounds of a town resident oversight board in light of the state post disciplinary system. In a, um, before, you know, the RFP, did not succeed. And so before we go any further on stuff, should we talk about what could be done with a town resident oversight board before we say create one when we don't really even know how the two would interact? So I proposed a rewording of that one. Um, with Pam's in blue, um, I think her number six develop a priority list of traffic safety zones that need solutions is much more of that specific thing that right. might not be appropriate for a town manager goal unless we reword something a little more general. I think it can get taken out completely because it is a li literally a list. Um, Jennifer, your hand was up while Mandy was talking, so. Yeah, well, you might want to finish this discussion. I was just going to react. I I was under the impression we had agreed that, what, that we had made a commitment, the council, to creating a resident oversight board, and that I think it's very important to the community that, that um, police protocols and policies be reviewed. So I could not support taking out those two items. It, it doesn't seem, go ahead, Lynn. I'm actually going to ask Athena, uh, either if you can or I can, we can pull up the motion uh, that we took in November of 2022, where both of these items were mentioned. And it is been it has been the subject of the ongoing report. Having said that, uh, I think Mandy Joe's point about the post commission is absolutely critical 
and the extent to which um, we need, I, I don't see any reason why we need to be duplicating anything they're already doing. So the work that Pamela has been doing has, you know, recognizes the creation of the post commission. And that's one of the things that makes this more complex than other, this will be the first resident oversight board in Massachusetts that's created since the post commission. And so that's, it, it does shape what the town can do or, or should do in this. We are working under the assumption that the town still wants to create a resident oversight board, um, but within the context of the post commission. And I think that's one of the things that um, as we frame out what the, what the um, support that we're getting um, would would do is is to put that into context. Uh, but the assumption, in my understanding, is that you, the council wanted a resident oversight board created. That that came out of the CSWG um, mm -hmm. report. Yes, yeah, and that's why I don't think it has to be listed by itself. Um, with yeah, and and this the difference here. Uh, and what was just added is it's with possible assistance from and higher, although I don't know where we're going to get the money to do that. But we, um, we have money set aside through ARPA. Through, through ARPA. Finish, yeah. Great. Thank you for reminding me of that. This um, that I just added is from that motion that Lynn referenced back in um, November of 22. And this is this is what we're operating on is to get a plan together to the council. Yeah. And again, I'm going to say, and then I'll step back, review and update policies and protocols that's something that's already been decided and and i don't think it needs to be listed as a separate item uh i'm not sure who was first i'm going to go with jennifer then mandy and then lynn um so are we saying that what we're asking for this year is just to report back about whether we can have a resident oversight board within in light of the post it's not whether you can, it's whether you want to. And I think what we would come to you with is a, is a plan. It would be a resident oversight board of such and such members. This would be, this is what the membership would look like. Here's what the budget would be. The request is to have the members compensated. Here's the budget that would need to be appropriated for um, training because there'd be su substantial training for anybody who would serve in this sort of quasi judicial setting. Uh, I think there'll be a debate from members of the community who, in terms of what powers the resident oversight board has members of the community wanted it to have subpoena power there's a lot of concerns about a commission uh, a town commission having subpoena power um, but that's where the debate will probably land for the council and it's and again in light of the state post disciplinary city system what is it that we still need or want with that there is that you want to follow up, Jen, and then I'll go. No, ahead. I'm just wondering because I think, um, you know, since, well, if you, you know, people aren't in the weeds with the, you know, day to day changes and policy, maybe at a state level, that there is an, maybe it's not for this committee to decide this now, but I think there's the expectation in the community that we are going to develop a resident oversight board. So if it's now going back, and maybe it needs to because of changes at the state level. I think we need to maybe get that out to the community because I, I think. Yeah, I, I just if I can jump in, I, I think the post commission was there when this was happened, when this was voted. It already existed. Right. What's, what's new is that we have there hasn't been a we can't just take a resident oversight board from another community and say we're going to do what they did because it's different now. And so and that's why what Pamela is working on is the. You know, what does a new what does a resident oversight board with the post commission look like um and that's and is this, sorry. go ahead no, so that is the c is she and she's in conversation with the cs sjc mm -hmm. i'm just you know concerned about is, is she, this something that's known beyond that, yeah i mean i think that doing she i mean they, they she meets monthly with them or uh, she or jennifer goes um so I, I think this was a recommendation from CSWG. It's, it was carried forward with the council. And that was like, what you said to us is go look what this, tell us what this is gonna look like and what's it gonna, what it's gonna cost basically. And tell us what powers it would have. We, you didn't say set it up and don't wanna look at it again. You're saying, well, give me more specifics. And that's what her job is. And and, and you can't just do it. I mean, it's, it's she that's why she's, 
you know, they have hired a consultant to help with some additional outreach. Um, and then they'll have a second phase that's going to actually develop the, the plan for the okay. resident oversight board. Yeah. It, it, this feels like a more realistic way of moving forward with a resident oversight board. I don't see it as stopping one or um, or saying, hey, go ahead, uh, but really saying, let's let's investigate what we where we are now in light of the pace and keep moving forward. And this is a way of doing that, particularly since Pamela is already working on it. It's not like it's sitting somewhere, not being. Right. Built. Yeah. I was just concerned. I don't want it to, you know, yeah, people you. say what well, was in here and then the GOL took it out. Well, they like, might you know, say that anyway, even though it's there, you know, that. Right. So I just yeah, that. People say um, what they want to say. <laughs> I, I, so I wanted to know this wasn't the first time this I mean, you want you, know, you might want you might want to just build on the council's already approved language that Athena put up. Yeah, Pupa. May I, Pat? Yeah, go ahead. So I'm sorry. What we currently have in there is create a resident oversight board, but as the motion says, the motion was propose a plan to create. The council's never actually said do it we've wanted to see as Paul described. And so I think the motion we passed in 2022 conflicts with the current number three, not what I proposed, but the one that was there. Um, and I guess I object to using the manager goals as a backdoor way of adopting policy. Yeah, um, that We haven't actually, pre like major changes in policy. So I, I would say just like sort of what Paul just proposed, I, I'm not wedded to my language. Um, I, why don't we just take the language from the motion and instead of saying create a resident oversight board, take not the whole language, I would say propose to the town council a plan for the creation of a resident oversight board, period, uh, or semicolon or whatever, that part of it, because the rest is Paul's sort of domain, I think. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, okay. I think if we do that, that's clearly consistent with what, with what the council said a year ago, whereas create a resident oversight board is not, in my opinion. Okay. You don't do, you want to, do you want to say consistent with the council's vote? Just so it's clear that's where it's coming from? Yes. I mean, that's a good idea. Good suggestion. Yes, but not say with possible assistance. That can all go. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I would stop it at resident oversight board. At comma consistent with the council's November, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So are you saying get rid of the higher, et cetera? Get rid yeah. of everything yeah. from with possible to development yeah. of that plan. Yeah. Good. I yeah. like that. All right. Now we're still on number four, review and update policies and protocols of the Amherst Police Department. I, I said what I said. It doesn't need deleted. I just wanted to bring it up. It's okay with me if it's deleted, but Jennifer? Uh, I'd like to leave it in. I think that's really okay. important to the community. Okay. okay. Again, could we say, use the language that was in that motion? For the police protocols? Yes. Can we pull that up? Thank you, Lynn. Again, I would, I'm sorry, Pat. I'll put my Go ahead, Lynn. No, I, I don't have trouble with you just speaking. We're a small enough group. Go ahead, Lynn. So I would uh, not put the whole thing. I would just say, undertake a review of public safety protocols and then stop there, uh, consistent with the council's November 14th, 2022 vote. Yeah, I think that's... I because it so be referred to use, but maybe that's not all that's there. Okay. And what did we say about youth empowerment and in that motion?
So that part's been moved to a the capital goal, one mm -hmm. of the capital infrastructure goals. So right here, then we're just talking about develop oh. programming for youth empowerment. Yeah, which we okay. have ARPA funding for. Okay. Yeah, the center we moved somewhere else. Thank you. And then Pam's her four 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 five are all already in there then. And then it's this traffic safety zones that she proposed. That I think is a little too specific personally. Yeah. And also it's again just a list. I don't yeah. Paul? Are you thinking? I, I'm, yeah, I was slightly different. I, develop programming for seniors i think pam's actually right that there is a lot of programming already by, being done i guess i would need more clarity on what you want to it what, what would that look like to you i think for me it is um we're losing seniors because we they can't use the exercise room that we have equipment that we're not utilizing and people are leaving and going to hadley mm -hmm. um and I've gotten that information from some of the folks at the senior center. So what? So it's not programming specifically, but um, it's work on the senior center itself or yeah. staffing the senior center. So programs can be implemented. Does that make? And that might be too specific, Paul. I don't. No, no. I think the addressing the physical place of that, which that belongs in the capital area. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's in five major capital investments, I think. Yeah. yeah. So then we were putting it. Yeah. And I could be, I could deal with it coming yeah, out. It, that's where that should be. Yeah. I would take the programming out because I think that should, they might find that to be sort of like. So we would need that job. one in, Athena, the, the programming. Yeah. 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 Two. So Sorry, I didn't hear that. Out. We're taking out this. Yeah. And we can you can get rid of the green color too if you want to. <laughs> well, if we're done with this, we need an and before five. Yeah, there you go. Got it. Um, did is there a way to address? I don't want to be specific about this, but clearly the TSO carryover memo is going to include the traffic safety zone issue. And it's in our carryover memo as and, well. Right. So is there a way to... Um... So the carryover memos are what the council's doing. And what we've done in these goals is under working with the council or relationship with the council and other things is support the council in its work, right? And if the council's working on safety zones, then the manager needs to support the work. So yeah. then it should be number six should be and support the council, but we don't need to say no, that. No, but that's that's but, in that's, management. Yeah. Right. And I, I misspoke. I'm not talking about TSO safety thing, priorities. I'm talking about carrying over the um, commission that Paul mm -hmm. is requesting that would limit some of our powers. And among other things. So are we okay with this right now? So are we including something with six or not? I would delete it. I would delete it as well because- so we're not mentioning seniors. They're, the senior, it's in the capital project. We're going to come back to the seniors in number five, Jennifer, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the roads you could, you'll bring them up and- four under management goals for infrastructure management mm -hmm. that might address Pam's concerns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Can we continue? Mm -hmm. uh, are, we, uh, are we agree in agreement? Like, I'm sorry, what, Mandy? I was just saying we have to delete Pam Rooney's name from there too. Yeah. That was just for us. Yeah. Uh. We kind of did economic vitality. Paul, have you had a chance to look at that at all? And is there anything missing or things that you want add, added? I don't. No, I guess that's okay. good. Yeah. I'll, all right, let's move to housing affordability. No, I, I, what? what? <laughs> oh, sorry. I keep like reading and not looking at you. Here. 
Mandy some, and then Jennifer. Some of my stuff that I sent is in this document. So I, I got yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a, a couple things here. Um, it, some of it's fairly minor rewording, but I, I question whether we need to have the phrase in number one, including the bid chamber and colleges and universities. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I just question whether we need it. Um, I, I f I'm fine with getting rid of it. And then I had diverse neighborhoods, comma, affordable housing, just fixing things up there. I added, well, I changed number two. I reworded number two. Number two is facilitate the review and revision. So I, I instead of facilitate the review, I, I did it review and revise town regulations to reduce barriers to operating a business in Amherst. Um, just a little more direct, I think. Um, and then uh, let's get oh, wait on. no so so that was to to I I split number two into two is one of the right. things I did review and revise town regulations to reduce barriers to operating a business in Amherst that was number my new number two number three was provoke proposed revisions to the zoning bylaws to increase and support economic development throughout the town including form based zoning. Um. So that was my new number three, because it seemed like those two were kind of different to each other. Um, well, the reduction of barriers, I, I guess, was a split from number one. Um, yeah, so those were basically my changes, a little other words, but. In the, in the one above, it needs a comma after neighborhoods. Review and revision to reduce and the reduction of barriers, I think, in number two. To reduce yeah. barriers. Sorry, I'm, I'm yeah. trying to get all of Mandy's in here. While yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. We'll wait. And then Jennifer gets to speak before any of the rest of us. Oh, now? Yeah. No, no. Wait for Athena. <laughs> right. Okay. And then Athena, the old number two is just a repeat of the new number three when you get around to it. And just before you, Jen, I'm going to sneak in here because number two, as it's written now, review and revise town regulations to reduce and the reduction of, I think it's simply to reduce the barriers to operating a business in Amherst. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, okay. Do we want to say reduce barriers or better facilitate Oh, okay, we can leave that. Yeah, um, let's not. Ever. Right. Okay. No. So I was just going to ask if form-based zoning was too specific. I had, I had suggested something like including or retaining a consultant to work with the town and residents in developing design guidelines. I mean, do we know we want it to be form-based zoning? I'm okay with getting rid of that phrase. That yeah. so it is throughout the town. Are you I mean, done, think, Jen? Well, I, th I think it's good to have the Great design, oh, the no, design guide. Are you talking to me? Go ahead. Yeah. No, I just was going to ask if we want to keep. <clears throat> so I, I so last year we had had that we wanted to consult and retain for design guidelines. That's happened. Mm -hmm. it, it's so just well, starting. It's just starting now. Right. So we don't need to put it in because it's happening. Right. Okay. Uh, they they have they I don't know the bid hasn't been awarded yet but they've done the procurement. So do you think that we don't need to? That, that for next this that will be that will be a con the work will have been contracted but not done. So do you think it needs to be mentioned in the goals? No, because it's actually going to be happening. It's actually going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll yeah. Okay. And Lynn, did you have your hand up? Next? Yeah, in number three, it just is awkward. Proposed revisions to and revisions of. Just oh, say really? proposed revisions to the zoning bylaws. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. And Paul, how long can we count on you being here? Um, I just I think eleven. Okay. So okay. 
And is this method okay for you or do you I want love it? This? Yeah. Okay. It's great. Good. Good Lynn's work. hand is up. No, Go it, ahead, Lenny. Sorry. No, no, no. Down. <laughs> Thank you, Athena. Uh, shall we move on to housing affordability? Now, I don't know if we're including all of her suggestions or anything, but this was. Well, Athena's working on adding what I had written. Yes. We'll yeah. About Thank it. you. Um, these are Mandy's changes. I'm going to try and get them in here. Mandy, do when you're ready or when Athena's ready, yeah. do you want to talk us through the changes you're proposing? Sure, I can talk us through and then I can, I, I've got some comments on, I think, Pam's ones because I proposed deleting a number of them. Um, so I proposed deleting number four entirely. Um, the reason was because that is not part of that that as a separate i was thinking about the comprehensive housing policy and its five particular goals um and number 4 <clears throat> isn't to, it is sort of not directly related to any one particular of those goals. Our goals were increasing the diversity of housing for, you know, and, in, and increasing diversity of housing, increasing um, the home ownership and rental housing opportunities at all income levels. Um, you know, and so number four, I, I just didn't see as as number one, housing affordability, um, or it falls into others. So I will say that we can have the conversation. Um, my reword of number, the new number four, what was five, um, lower rents and address rental costs um, was just a reword in general. I, I, I wasn't sure, you know, just like Pam, I think asked, how is this possible? What is it? Um, attainable rental housing to residents. So I just reworded that one. Numbers, Pam's numbers six and seven, I deleted um, the publishing data. I felt like that was just too specific in a checkbox. Mm -hmm. um, um, I reworded the staffing strategies one to similar to how the one in climate action is um, regarding funding surges. Um, and then there was a excuse me, the advocate for higher ed build faculty and staff housing, I thought was too specific and something that we as a council haven't necessarily adopted or discussed um, and might have, I would reword it. I'm gonna go to Jen. Yeah, well, no surprise, I would want to put all those back. I mean, I think we had in the town manager goals last time, almost like as a lens to look at policies in terms as if they stabilize or support maintaining or increasing our year round population. I think that so to take that out for this year is like saying we don't we've either accomplished it or we don't think that's a priority anymore. I mean, I think that actually that should be a lens through which we look at a lot of our policies. Do they you know, exacerbate or a declining population? Is that going to be the result or are they going to help to sustain and increase um, a year round population? Because that's, I think, an existential crisis for our town. So I don't know why we would take that out. And I also think um uh, so I, I, I don't know that we've actually discussed, I don't know why we wouldn't advocate, why that just wouldn't be a given that we'd want our higher ed education, uh, institutions to at least address, uh, faculty and staff housing in town. I mean, mm -hmm. and I don't know why, I don't know what it hurts to put that there. I can't imagine anybody opposes it. 
Well, it says advocate that the higher education issues build faculty and staff housing. I think that's part of Paul's job. And it's just, it, I, it's just. I don't know that we've ever, it, that's actually has been specifically that, but that that's certainly an important part of but this is stabilizing that, and expanding our year round population and providing, I, I see that as all affordable housing. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of because our, part of why we are not sustaining or growing our year-round population and why faculty and employees of our colleges and universities can't live here is because housing is too expensive. Even, you know, rental and homeowner opportunities. And we limit homeowner opportunities by denying uh, duplexes, et cetera. So we, there, and I said that, Jen, because here is a debate that's going on in decisions that haven't really been made by the council as a group. And um, last year, we did agree that we were going to have as a town manager goal that part of the way we would policies would be evaluated is in terms of whether or they'd be vetted is whether they help to stabilize and expand our year round population. We did have that in the goals last time. Yes, I know. I know. So to take that but out I, is making a policy decision. <laughs> and I don't know why I can't sure. I don't know why it's Lynn, controversial. I'm gonna go to Lynn. I think you and I are just go and we'll keep going and I'll, I'll go with your thing. Go I ahead. Just wanted to, I just wanted to mention I'm not clear that we want to put it in our goals, but in fact, both UMass, but even more importantly, Amherst College and the five colleges are talking about number eight. I, again, I just right. want All to mention that. All the more reason that. to have it here. <laughs> I just want to mention that that's going on right now. The only role that the town would have in that is around permitting and you know right. whether or not those housing units would get real estate tax on them and so forth. So anyway, I just wanted to mention it. That's all. Mandy and then Jen. So the eight, nine or whatever, number one, I don't believe belongs here because we have an entire goal that says relationship with UMass, Amherst College and Hampshire College. If we're right. going to talk specifically about them and we want this in here, and I'm not saying we want it in here or not, but it doesn't belong here. It belongs in that goal. Um, and I actually think it's already covered in that goal from the general point of view. I, I I think the difference between Jennifer's view and my and potentially Pat's view is the specificity of that and using these goals to adopt backdoor, backdoor ways to adopt things without full discussion at a council. I don't necessarily disagree that we should have conversations with the educational institutions, but if we're going to base our entire housing affordability on telling them to build housing, that's a conversation we should have because that's a massive decision of put it to them and not do it ourselves. And I see putting some of this in here as do it yourself. We don't have an obligation to do it. Um, so I don't want it in housing affordability because I think it's doing things that is not part of our comprehensive housing policy. It falls under number one, other goals more appropriately in this document and not this one because it falls under that relationship with UMass Amherst College and Hampshire College. Um, and I, so, and, and then I, I wanna say more about the maintain and publish current current data ones. Well, how much are we gonna ask our town to do multiple work? Because some of that data is already published on state and other nonprofit websites. Um, and how much are we gonna duplicate and cost? That's the number six and seven of PAMS is very costly. Yeah, uh, but there's also a clarification on that because the state data doesn't address how many units are actually affordable because of the definition that makes all the apartments in a building. But I think it's too specific for here. So I agree with that, but for a very different reason. Jennifer? So two things. I think we need to put four back in because we discussed it at length earlier. I think it was like in December of last year and January of this year when we were doing the town manager goals. So it would be a policy decision to take it out because we've already discussed that. So I think number four should remain 
And I could accept number eight going in another section of the report, maybe where we're talking about the higher ed. And for but number think, four, you're, I'm, just a clarification for me, you're doing uh, the seek input and uh, proposed measures to stabilize housing. For right, because we population. put that in, we discussed and it. And save the character of our town. Okay. So it, it's a way and I number read eight goes somewhere else. The way I'm reading this, if I can understand the goal, the first <laughs> number one is to um, promote home ownership opportunities for low and moderate income residents, including first time home buyers. The second one is the seasonal shelter. And the third one is um, diversify housing stock available to all residents. Oops, I went away. Athena's just moving something. I'm sorry. I'm just trying not to lose track of it. Yeah. I, I think if we try to say what we want in, 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 so I think the first one is home ownership, opportun home ownership opportunities for lower income. The second one is the shelter. The third one is diversify housing stock, which I assume means, you know, workforce housing and everything, not just, um, however we do that it's it's uh, more than just single family homes and apartment it's all okay. that's that's what all those other things um, it's all the types of housing and then the next one is a little like the stabilized housing for year-round population there's lots of strategies and then the next one after the then the second number four uh, this is rental housing we're going back to rental housing and then and targeting getting federal funds to do all this stuff. It's, you know. How does that seem to you, Paul? It's, it just seems like a lot of different things. And yeah. Different, as far as around. cutting the pie, lots of different ways to make sure we say low income ownership opportunity and everybody else also, and different housing options available. Um, is there a way to combine that that makes sense? Yeah, I'm trying to think that through. So, so I think if we go back to the comprehensive housing mm -hmm. policy, one, three, five, and six all come from goals in the comprehensive housing policy. Okay. So do they need to be listed? Hmm. Would you treat and that like the CARP? That's what I'm thinking, but Jen and then Lynn. So the comprehensive housing policy was developed and adopted, I guess, before the current council. So it doesn't to say, well, we're not going to really put include something that wasn't in the comprehensive housing policy. That also doesn't give counselors elected after that much input. <laughs> Lynn? Um, it may be time to, I don't want to say re revise, but at least review the comprehensive housing policy with the next council to see if there's things that are not addressed or things that, it's to, to just make sure it's much more um, reviewed. It's it probably it's time to review it. It was developed in the first council. It took a lot of work to develop it, um, and a lot of what's here. But what I actually was going to suggest is that if we took the permanent shelter and either put that as one, and so it doesn't disrupt the issue of resident housing, it might help in understanding this. So it's either one or it's six. Um, I agree with that, but I'm also wondering if we can simply take it out because we are working on it. That's I don't. Yeah, I think it's going to take a lot of work to get state money for it, and so, so you, you think it should stay? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And how do people feel about moving it? I think that's a good idea. I think it makes a lot of sense to move it. And where would we move it? To a different section? No, no. no the number one in, instead of number oh, two. Oh, okay. So, and then have the next P about home ownership 
and then, or have the next be about diversity of housing, then about home ownership, and then about rental. That sounds good. And then the shelter. And no, the shelter, the shelter we went first. And I, uh, I don't think it's first or last. So I, to, I would put three as number two. And then I would put, that's the next is home ownership. And now- You would put number five as number four. I would put number five as four and then four as five. Is this right or did I miss let's, one? Let's read it. I'm going to turn this off so it's easier to read. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And we would be getting rid of all of the stuff in yellow? Yes. I have a question so for Paul. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what stabilize housing for the year-round population means? Because I'm unclear of what that is meant to mean. Yeah, so... Yeah, so this topic area is housing affordability, right? That's the topic. Is, um... I frankly you know, wondered whether or not it's housing, access to housing, or something else, because it goes a little beyond affordability. So proposed measures to stabilize housing for the year-round population in town. What does that mean? You know, I'm thinking what, Jennifer probably has some ideas. So part of when the planning department, their concerns about the proposed zoning revisions was that given the realities of supply and demand in Amherst, that, you know, I'm all for more different kinds of housing. Again, I always say this, I live in one of the there's only two general resident zoning districts in town. We have all kinds of housing. That's one reason I wanted to live here. Um, but that it, it would probably result in more housing. We have to find a way that it doesn't just result in more housing priced per bedroom that our year round population can't afford. I mean, we got a, we got an email, the whole council got an email maybe a week ago from a resident. I don't know. She's not in, you know, I, it's not someone I, I know where I think has written to us before, but was very concerned because she saw the posting for 798 North Pleasant street, which is now a four, there's two, four bedroom units. East, each is being advertised at $5,500 a month. And that's, same, um, the owners of that property had come before the ZBA very recently to build another duplex with eight bedrooms between the two. And for uh, for various reasons, they were not given a special permit because it had to do with complementary uses. But, you know, that was an example where that was going to be more housing, again, at $1,100 a bedroom. That is, if that is what is if we say we're going to allow more duplexes and triplexes all over town and that's what they are, that is certainly not working in support of sustaining and expanding our year round population. Uh, then you have to address the capitalist system and none of us really want to do that. So we have people buying, selling and utilizing. But uh, I think if we have, a, there's things, if we could have a lens looking at there are things we can do, you know, that that's another conversation, but. Right. And that's the issue. It's another conversation. Lynn and, and could go, but, but we discussed having this. We, we discussed this earlier in the year. Now, I don't know, was it not under housing affordability, but that we were going to have as a town manager goal, adopting policies that help to retain and expand our year round population. So I don't think we can just take them, GOL can right now just decide we don't want that anymore. Still don't know what really what it is okay. or what it means, but I'm, we're gonna stop Jen, you and I, and we're gonna go to Lynn and then Mandy, and then you could get another turn. So I wanna, I wanna use an example. 
Okay. And it's something I'm actually very concerned about. And I think it is in line with where Jennifer is coming from. The city of Rome, Italy, has gotten to the point that nobody lives there permanently anymore. It is almost all rentals and short-term rentals. So you can go find all kinds of short-term rentals in Rome, but what you can't find in Rome is anybody who lives there and therefore has a significant interest in the running of the city of Rome. And if you start get to the point, and I'm not saying that renters don't invest in the town, but if you get to the point where we tip the balance, where we no longer have a significant number of ongoing residents year round, or who, you know, maybe they don't live here um, year round. They can they be own. renters. Uh, I, they, it's yeah, not. I don't care. They, they live here year round. <laughs> who will invest in the town and help the government continue to run and be invested in what happens in the town. I, I really feel then you have crossed a line where we're no longer taking care of Amherst. Now, how do we get there? is a very difficult question and it but it is you're seeing this i for some reason or another a another member of the community has regularly now sent me articles where this same conflict is going on in ithaca new york it's going on in chapel hill north carolina and it's all about the same thing okay i'm gonna say something in response very quickly about renters they are not all students. Uh, Evan Ross was a counselor. He's a I, renter. No, I it's not your that. turn, Lynn. It's my turn. Uh, Anika Lopes, counselor, is a renter. So, I, you know, I'm not, I, if you guys want to leave it in there, uh, because it's something you want Paul to do, but it also seems to me that it is something uh, that the council needs to do to talk about how do we stabilize year-round population. But Which Evan Ross is year-round population. No, it, they can be renters. We're talking about year-round. doesn't matter if they're renters or not renters. Yep, yep. So I'm stepping back, and you can leave it there if you want. But you, but anyway, Mandy? I mean, maybe, maybe it should say explore measures or something. But, and I am, I absolutely accept that renters are there. But a renter who is, there's renters, yeah. At, be careful, you're, Lynn. You're talking about long term renters, a family. I'm that talking rents. about long term renters. Our like family. Evan Ross and Anika uh, Lopes and her oh, mother. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, Mandy. <laughs> so maybe year round is the wrong word, number one. But number two, listening to what Jennifer said, what when I asked, what does stabilize housing for the year round population mean? Because I'm not sure what it means, right? Jennifer, you talked about affordability right? Making long-term living in Amherst affordable, right? That, that's what it sounded like to me. And I'm not sure how number five then, this proposed measures to stabilize, is different than um, increase homeowner opportunities for low and moderate income residents, including first-time home buyers, and measures to address and increase the availability of attainable rental housing to residents. That's the affordability issue. Um, and so I, I guess one thing I'm struggling with is how number five is different from three and four combined. Um, and then year round has year round has a bad connotation. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to say it because it implies that if you don't live here year round, you don't belong here. If you're a student, you know, you're not saying non-student population, but that's what you're really applying, uh, implying. And Lynn talked about a completely different issue, that that um, Airbnb issue, right? The Cape has a massive problem with all of its buildings being bought up by investors and rented on a short-term basis. And so there isn't any availability for even seasonal rentals, like full-year seasonal work, full-time seasonal workers from May to October. They can't even find housing because it's more lucrative to rent housing on a weekly basis on the Cape. And that's what investors are doing. So if we're talking about long-term 
resident population, that might be a little less triggering than year round population word wise and, and gets to the point Lynn was saying um, about sort of that short term investor Airbnb or two month or four month semester by semester rentals right? Or summer only rentals or week by week on the Cape, if we're talking about it, Air, you know, places that are bought up and rented only for families coming to visit their kids. Um, and so we've removed housing from people who want to live here long term. Um, you know, Look, maybe are you suggesting to simply take proposed measures to stabilize housing for um, long term long -term residents? residents in town? That yeah. might be a solution. Jennifer, how do you, just responding just to that. Absolutely no problem, that's great. Okay, that's fine. And I wanna apologize for letting my uh, resistance to certain aspects of our community to be rising and interfering with my role as a facilitator, but I easily get mad when I hear crap. Jennifer. Yeah, I just wanna say it's, I, I know, I'm not speaking for Lynn, but I think she corrected herself right after. We are talking about long-term has nothing to do with renters. I grew up in New York City. I'm a, like everyone I know is a renter, but you know we live in the same place for a long time, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> we All agree. Right. Paul, uh, you want to do a quick look at this now and anything that you would change or don't want there or should be added? Well, it's a lot of initiatives. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's like all everything needs to be addressed up. Um, over yeah so and, and this is like a, this would be the question like what do you want us to start with yeah, you know priority? that would be a, the next question to the council and it's it's fine to list them all but if we have limited bandwidth which we do what would you like us what would you like the planning department to focus on first hmm. these are all priorities i get that the shelter is on its own track but <clears throat> I and, think that's where the council, the next council in an early, early retreat. Yeah. yeah. You know, in many ways, we would, yeah, we don't have to talk about the substance of it now, but. Hmm. I, Lynn? Uh, we're, I don't think we're going to resolve what mm -hmm. to leave in and take out. I think the retreat would identify um some more discussion about this and that we owe it to the next council to allow that to happen. And, and I think I, if this, I just asked, it's a question for Jennifer. Do you think that number five does, it, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about the sort of um, commercialization of our, res, of our residential housing stock. And I think that's a major issue that people are identifying neighbors, neighborhoods turning over to companies that are buying and renting usually to students. Do you think number five addresses that? Because that's a concern the council should identify because yeah. that's been raised many times. Do you think number five addresses that adequately? Yes, it, although I, and housing is only a maybe a part of it. Oh, it's a major part of it. But yes, yeah. I think it does. I think that just has to be a lens because sometimes I hear policy proposals suggested that I think actually will work against maintaining a long-term mm -hmm. population mm -hmm. that, that will actually drive people away. Yeah. But I, I just think it's important for the council to say for those neighborhoods that are feel like they're they're tipping into all rent all all you know corporations buying houses. Right. Say, and that's ah, across the community that's yeah. it is and across say, the ah, community. Number number five is what that's what that means. I think that's what you can point to. Okay, Lynn. Um, I unfortunately, Pat, I have to. I have a hard stop at about two minutes of eleven. I don't. What time is it now? It's ten got fifteen. Ten minutes till then. Okay. And Paul, you have to leave at eleven as well. We can Correct. keep going, Jennifer and Mandy and I, because we're still a quorum. Yep. Yes. Uh, Paul, is there a very or Lynn uh, or anyone a very specific area that you want us to do before you're off this call? Uh, the one thing I want to make sure you have is the senior set improvements to the seniors, the physical. That's our next senior. one. Major yep, capital investments. I want to make sure that that's in there. Thank you, Paul. 
Yeah, and that's not, uh, and what we're talking about is improvements, uh, not a whole new, Can we, oh. new center, I don't believe. Go ahead, Lynn. And Could then Mandy. Say, explore options for a youth empowerment center and separately and an enhanced senior center or something. Or that renovated or, or a renovated senior center or something that basically is consistent improvement with to improved senior center. Or I like an improvements to the senior center, whoever yeah, put that, that in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mandy, thank you, Lynn. I, I had a couple of requested changes to this this one. Yes, number, go ahead. Six, number six, um, the multi-year plan. Um, I, we haven't as a council discussed a multi-year plan per se. I know it's been discussed in various committees. Um, so I actually said facilitate, Athena's typing it in, facilitate a council discussion on the maintenance of public ways in anticipation of developing a multi-year plan for roads and sidewalks. Um, I, I'll say the reason I, I worded it this way is because we talk a lot about roads and sidewalks and that street index. That street index has five categories, but we don't actually talk about where we want all our streets on that list of excellent 100 rated like 98 to 100 down to zero, right? Um, are we okay with fair streets because we can get 10 more years out of them and save the money for other things or something? So I think we need to have a discussion about where we're actually going with that, the roads and sidewalks and what that multi-year plan would be for before we develop a multi-year plan. Um, and then number seven, um, I reworded to explore options for and facilitate a council discussion on a youth empowerment center, senior center, and or community center that includes both youth and senior spaces. Uh, improvements to the senior center is great too. Um, so I think we need discussions before we explore options. We have to have better facilitated council discussions. Yeah, I agree. Is there anybody in disagreement with those changes? Uh, no, I'm not I'm not in disagreement. I would just not be so specific about what's in a com community center. I would just say and or community center. There's lots of debate about whether mixing youth and seniors or even children, young children and seniors is really working. So I just say I'd stop at community center. About that i'm okay with just stopping at community center that's but, fine I, yeah although i like the well anyway yes that's fine and this yeah. below is um these are pam's suggestions yes. yeah. okay it, it looked exactly the same almost except for I number know. eight she yeah. added the number advocate for the creation of a state level building authority for municipal facilities so i think that I, I, that's but we are already doing that but i think we could say and continue to advocate well i wonder if that's part of the management goals though where we've got management goals of assist the council well this one's just a supporting legislative efforts to address financial of higher ed so that one's higher ed but maybe there's a management goal somewhere in um administration and leadership that that should talk about advocating for state level changes or something instead of putting it in each policy goal a more general advocacy i role. think that's excuse me i think that's fine except the let the council yourself included and others as well have been part of advocating so how do we um, include it as not just a management responsibility well this is the manager's goals this isn't the council. No, it doesn't have to. Right. So we're I, mean, not I, have no, I have no problem, but I, I, it, there are certain pieces of legislation that seem to be of much more importance to the council right now. This is one of them. Pilot legislation is one of them. Um, and then, of course, we have all of our special legislation, which we're making absolutely no progress on. So we put it under relationship with the council instead of administration and leadership or something but i think we could just go with a general advocacy thing 
that works. And then it doesn't need changed year to year. Right. We'll reword it, Athena, for generalness when we get there. So can I uh, just very quickly ask, um, since I've got to go, I'm so sorry about this conflict. Um, it doesn't seem to me like we're going to be ready for Monday. I think we can be. I think we can be too, if you, because there are three of us left to go through it. We're different people. We have different responses. I think we're working well okay. together. Okay. Um, and to slow it down, I think would be a mistake. I do want us, the three of us who are left to look at the carryover mem memo before we go. And I'm also proposing possibly um, a, a meeting of GOL on December 6th. And I do need you here for Lynn. You can't uh, do that. You're going to Boston, Pat. Oh, that's the day we're going to Boston. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Never mind. All right. Is there another day, though? Because I'm hearing what Pat's saying. Yeah, but basically, I can look at that. I think we need another meeting just to to, yeah. to not. I think we can get this done, but I think that we the rules of procedure, how we're going to present it. And I want to share out that work. I want us looking at that. And I feel like that could be a meeting by itself and wouldn't necessarily even be two hours. Uh, but I'd like to figure something out. Uh, between now and the 13th and, and can, can just... folks send their like their best availability for oh. an extra meeting before the Thank 13th to me and pat and and we can try and figure out sure. a date that works for everybody thank you athena thank you we okay enough, let's folks. Get... yeah thank you, you. Bye. yeah th paul thank you particularly for this is great thank you. okay thank you okay let's get into racial equity and social justice that's where we are is that correct I added this little green thing is mine um, uh, in number one, use a racial and social justice lens when making decisions and incorporate significant input from BIPOC and LGBTQ residents in shaping policies and procedures. Um, I think that's a very important inclusion that we have not done before. Mandy. So I did something different. <laughs> um, um, Athena just put it in. I in, instead in number one, deleted everything after the word decision. So that entire phrase and created a new number five um, that reworded it to be broader than just BIPOC. Um, Except I, then I want, I hear you and I'm interrupting and I apologize. No, and, and so but I, 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 when I, I say marginalized, is, we got told. At, may I finish? May oh, I, finish? <laughs> I I did that because number one, I thought it could, if we were going to do it, it should be a different number. It shouldn't be just in the use of racial, using the lens when making decisions, we should be incorporating. If we want to incorporate um, uh, input, it should be its own thing because it shouldn't just be when making decisions, it should be in other sort of things too, potentially. So it, it brings it out as a more important thing. And I, I came up with marginalized. I'm not wedded to from who in terms of how we word it, but I thought BIPOC was too specific. Right. Um, and so I went to the general marginalized. We can talk about what, but um, but I thought BIPOC was too restraining. Yeah. Um, I I've what I'm reacting to is the uh, and then Jennifer will be your turn. What I'm reacting to, and I want included in here, is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, plus, because we have been told by some members of the community that if you're a white, if you're white and a lesbian, that's not really marginalized, and that's not true. Um, those of us who have, you know, hide and or have been beaten or attacked or whatever, so somewhere in here. It, you know, marginalized, it's it's in our community, a debatable definition. So uh, it, it perhaps input from BIPOC, lesbian and gay, blah, 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 and other my, marginalized communities, because the, thank you, Jennifer, because the women's community is also a marginalized community in certain situations. There's not, how does that feel? Hey, Jen, we agree. <laughs> Love you, kid. 
<laughs> it happens more than occasionally. I know. <laughs> I know. And I do like you a lot. So. You too. <laughs> How does that feel to, uh, uh, well, Mandy? No, that, that one's fine with me. Um, I just wanted to add, I had also added other town, appropriate town committees because it seemed like that sometimes we get a lot of comments that, that the appropriate committees are not yes. brought into the loop when discussions are happening. And that's true. That's true. That's particularly true of the um, dis disability uh, committee. They're ignored consistently. Is that, on the, uh, so we use a racial and social justice lens. Yep, support the work and, yep. Yep. I feel good about this. Is that, okay, are we ready for management goals? I think so. I was just gonna get rid of the-, Go the Hypothetical I added of define essential. Oh, I had one fix. Um, in which one? The not provide leadership right in that paragraph you were just modifying the anticipate future needs and position the town to meet those needs. It's just a yeah. verb thing. Yeah. That we missed last time. It looks like um, Pam to talk about Pam's number four. The manager doesn't appoint charter review committee members. The council does. So it's right. not even appropriate in here. And also maintain essential municipal services is a part of Paul's job that's described right. in the charter. Well, it's number three. She was just saying what hers would be. Yeah. In the oh, okay. Did. But we've not defined it in the past, so. I don't think it needs defining. I mean, I think it could be useful to have that conversation, but not as a management goal. I think it's part of a council conversation. Um, if I can jump in really quick, the yes. um, I uh, plan to bring up during finance committee discussions of the budget guidelines, the need for um, financial support for the charter review commission. So I think that might be a more appropriate place. You and I, I was going to make sure it was in the financial guidelines too, Athena. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, stick it in there now. <laughs> Having learned from being on the charter commission itself and having to go to town meeting for funds, I was like, <laughs> we need to make sure it's in there. <laughs> Let's keep okay. moving because I want right. to get this done today and we have to look at the carryover menu quickly. Menu. So personnel, the whatever's in green, I had su suggested deleting. Whoever. And that's what I was suggesting also. Does that feel comfortable? I'm sorry, can you put, I just didn't read that. What was taken out? Sorry. Uh, work with the APD to identify steps that are documented and inform models for town departments. And that, that, what we're saying is foster a proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I don't yeah. Good. Okay. Anybody have any other changes there? Let's go to finance. I didn't have any. I just thought I had to mention that. <laughs> I don't have any. Holy shit. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, so this is Pam. Pursue and support efforts to increase chapter 90 fund funding. Chapter nine and pilot payment to Amherst based on a value of facilities on public land. Is this another one that goes in that um, I think that's policy the advocacy state level? Yeah. 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 Just going to flunk it down here. Okay. Okay. Um, infrastructure anything that people want added oh i i had a change to number five the maintain a list of future road and sidewalk repairs and new sidewalks i would stop it there and delete everything else oh wait no not delete everything else no, no, no. that incorporates the bike and pedestrian plan only so the is available to public and regularly updated i would keep but that incorporates the bike and pedestrian plan that bike and pedestrian plan is not adopted by the council yet 
that doesn't mean it won't be at some point, but I felt that putting it in here sort of implies adoption when we haven't done so yet. I'm not even sure it's finished on a GIS level. So I, I thought we should delete it. Maybe at some point someone should put it on some council discussion or a TSO tran transition memo or something about talking about the bike and pedestrian plan, but it's not been adopted at the town-wide level yet. And so I didn't think it belonged in here. Uh, I'm not uncomfortable with that, Jen. No, I'm fine. I'm sorry. Just... Community oh. engagement. I had a number six. Well, I had a new number six and deleted the current number six. Okay. Thank you, Athena, for typing in my new number six. So this is the issue with people submit stuff, particularly to seek, click, fix, but it's other things too. And then they never hear back. They, ne they you know, if we submit something to IT as a town employee, because we have a problem with our computer or something, we get that ticket system where we get, oh, you've submitted something, now we've resolved it. And you've got that two-way communication. I, I thought we should have a goal of ensuring that that happens for mm -hmm. other things like see, click, fix, or from the resident side when they've submitted a complaint or something or something like that. Jennifer? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I, okay. Yeah. All right, we can go so what on. What was the former number six? I the mean, number six before oh, was child friendly. Ways to promote a more child and family friendly town culture. And I just don't understand it. We have that and we have <laughs> parks and all this other stuff. So it doesn't feel like, yeah. Do you think that had to do with um, if someone wants to like participate in a meeting or be on a board? It may not be the know. right place for it, but do you think that's what it was getting to? I don't I know. Been... Okay. Yeah, I really don't know either. But I would say that we do support a child-friendly town on many levels. Uh, relationship with the town council. Is that where number eight should go? Well, that so, so if you page down, Athena, we have in a number three in the relationship there. No, not all the way down to to the U UMass relationship one. That number three assists the council in initiating and supporting state legislative efforts to address all of that. Could we have something in the relationship with the town council that says assist the council in initiating and supporting state legislative efforts for, you know, I don't know whether we move this one completely, but um, or keep this here, but add a similar one, a parallel one up here in relationship with the town council that deals with this advocacy for, you know, Do you want assist or advocate or pursue and support? <laughs> if it's relationship with the council, it would be assist the council or also advocate for, I, I, I don't know how to word it, right? But it would be like assist the council in initiating and supporting State um, legislative efforts they have. Priority. Do you want to list? Do you want to list these three things? Well, it's but it's more than that, right? Because it's all of our yeah. special acts and all. I think it's state legislative efforts they've prioritized. The council has prioritized. I don't know. I don't um, know the word. For legislation. For special act legislation. Or for council priority state legislative actions and council special act legislation. I'm sorry. And council, um, and council special acts. I 
I think it's assist the council in. I don't know. The wording's not the greatest. It works for now, I think. Assist the council in, in and advocate for. So this state so legislative just, action, this one is, is encompassing the these three. I Did think, you want to, do you want to say including? And I should say count council priorities and including building authority I could go with that Jennifer I mean, we were trying to say assist the council in advocating for I think I'm trying to say both assist the council in advocating for and advocate for on his own yeah right both and then do both. we want to say specifically called out such as the state level building authority and pilot payment to Amherst based on value of facilities on public land? Because I think those two are important to call out. So I think it would be, we could call out all three that would require potentially every year modifying this. Um, but I think it'd be okay to call them out. So it's not efforts to increase, it would be increasing chapter 90 funding, comma, and increasing pilot payments. I think you could just say and pilot payments, because it's already you're saying increasing. Oh, and chapter increasing chapter 90 funding and pilot payments. It, yeah. They're two different things though, in a way. Okay. All right, that's fine. So I'd put a comma after chapter 90 funding. And then I would actually move council special acts to before all of this. Yes. Advocate for council special acts and council priority state legislative actions such as, because otherwise the special acts get buried. Can we go back to the beginning? Uh, I'm, con I'm having trouble with assist the council in and advocate for council special acts and council priority state legislation action. So maybe we should say advocate for and assist the council in advocating for. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Now I'm getting confused for some reason. So this is two pronged. He needs to assist us in our advocacy at the state level, but we're okay. also saying he needs to advocate too. Did there be a comma advocate for comma and assist the council in advocating for comma? Yeah, that works. That works well, Jen. Yeah. And then we delete what Athena put in to help us. So it says council priority on. I, I think it should say prior. Yeah. There's Go some ahead. word missing there. Um, I think it's council prioritized state legislation. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yes. That's, uh, yeah. Does the council have prioritized state legislative action? Well, I think it's state legislation. So we've sometimes adopted resolutions and stuff that in theory might be something like that. Okay. Jennifer. So so this would be this would be defined as something that the council has formally expressed support for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It will be support uh, because well, no, there's been because times I don't think they have has the council formally expressed support for any of these? No. Yes. No, Pilot I, payments, I, yes, right? Can I just, I think we have. Okay. No, haven't there been times Lynn has said we were sending a letter 
to like the legislature. I think that was for the building municipal that we wanted. So I think there's two yeah. of these. And I think the value, the pilot payments, Lynn sent a letter twice and the yeah. council approved it. I mean, twice, meaning once for each yeah. of those items and we approved it. Yeah. I think Jennifer's right. Okay. It might not be through resolution, but it's been through council letters. That we voted on in council. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Can we go on to relationships with the university, et cetera? I had two quick things. Yep, execute and manage strategic partnership agreements since we just executed yeah. one. Um, I think there needs to be an and after number one and two because we just got rid of number three. And then, yeah, I deleted the um, including factors such as institutional growth and change as sort of a little too specific. It's not that I was against it. I just thought in trying to clean up language. And I think that number, oh, that's the, we have to talk about that number eight then, I guess. Uh, yeah, build faculty and staff out. I don't mind advocating for that, but have we talked about that as a council? Not really. Yeah, so I, Jen? So if we leave it here and then the council approves it, wouldn't that be approval? Well, and that that's what I don't like about stuff like this. Of I that know. Back approval, Jennifer. <laughs> We're like sneaking around and we don't need to do that. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful idea. The idea is not that it is. The, some of the idea to the work with UMass Amherst and Hampshire to develop a strategic plan on economic development that would enhance, enhance economic vitality, um, but add economic development and housing and housing issues or something. Yeah, economic development and housing issues. That would, in, and, and housing issues that we don't even then have to add the, that would enhance economic vitality maybe. Would, would that work, Jennifer, maybe? Yes, and then we'll just, yes, because I think that we're going to talk about this, so it'll be part of it, when there's a discussion with the colleges about housing issues. I think now it's in the consciousness that that would be part of the conversation. Right, we can tell them to build faculty housing and they'll go right away and do it. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Jesus. Well, I have to say, this is an aside, Pam, at that, um, when the chancellor had that gathering at his house, mm -hmm. she found herself at the end talking to him and mentioned this and he was very interested. Great. Now, these are things that Kathy, now this is not, she sent another whole hoogee that's very long and complex. So I don't know whether we want to do this. So. so I think number three, we've covered in a mm -hmm. roundabout way. And see here, climb, use ARPA for solar. That's We haven't decided that as a council, although I certainly like it. It's, it's very specific too, yeah. right? And the, the support staff for securing federal tax credits, we just put in there as the ensure whatever that use of... Mm -hmm you know, that we take full availability. Um, and we so have the pilot. On. Yeah, Correct. I don't think we need that. Um, and I think our rewrite on the buildings, right? We rewrote them to support the elementary school building committee. You know, that, I, I don't know how, you know, she says get through construction on time. Well, yeah, that's well, not, that's that, a very specific. How does the manager do that when it's the building committee that that does all of that? So, and mobilize staff at DPW to support. I don't know that I'm they're not sure what that means. And the library vote yes, this will create a construction mess. I think Paul knows that. Uh, I don't think you know. I don't think we need to have list that. It's very specific. Uh, DPW, we tried to do that, right? We tried to be a little more specific. Mm -hmm identify and secure a location or locations for the Department of Public Works. 
I think yeah. I would ask Paul at a meeting whether, you know, in terms of maybe partnering with another town like Hadley to have a shared facility for DPW. And he said that he thought that could be a town manager goal. Yeah. One of the things he also said was that they were had been trying to do that. Uh, and it had not worked, it had collapsed, and that it's very difficult to, you know, we had a whole ambulance collaboration for, and then they pulled out and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. I would also say that our our current goal of identify and secure locations for the Department of Public Works it covers potential regional, right? We didn't say it had to be an Amherst. We didn't say it couldn't be regionalized, right? And so that that potential regional gets that spe specificity that I think we're trying to move away from. Okay, so I'm. Does this feel comfortable, Jen? Yes. Can we just go back and look at that racial um, equity? What was that? One more time to see what our final. Or was it public safety? I can't remember. Okay, right. here. No, uh, I think it was public safety. Well, okay. we were talking about the resident community. oversight board. Oh, community yeah. health and safety. Where are we? Uh, that one. Here. Okay. I just wanted to see what our final wording was. Can you roll up? Oh, no, never mind. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Great. Do we vote on these? Uh, yes. Let's take a formal vote on. Uh, I move that we accept or we, we recommend to the council. Give me a moment. But <laughs> 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 town the policy goals, whatever the whole title of the thing is, as amended at the eleven twenty nine meeting. I'll second. And can I just, do we have to do a formal roll call vote? Jennifer yes. Bob? Yes. Mandy Johanneke? Aye. Patricia Catherine DeAngelis? Aye. Okay. <laughs> I never knew that was your middle name. <laughs> so, At yeah. Kate. <laughs> Nobody's ever called me that. <laughs> Patty Cake. Patty Cake. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody called me that, either, but Patty. Um, Petsigetta was my favorite one. Uh, can we leave this now? I think we did what we need to do here. And I want us to look at the carryover uh, or the transition memo. And Jennifer, I want to thank you for working on that with me. Um, oh, you did most of it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, anyway, can you call that up, Athena? And I have no idea what time it is. So it's 1125. It's okay. Can people stay a little bit longer? Yes. Good. Good. So, um, hang on, I need to save this before. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, take your time. And what's what's in there for the carryover menu menu memo now is um, the document as uh, it's been edited. It's not your track change one, Jen, or you know whatever. Um, and again, it might not. I put it. In, yeah, Mandy, you have your hand raised. So I think everything that has a current referral to GOL is a measure that is automatically carried over per the council rules of procedure, and yet this one lists none. So um, that's the Black Reparations Committee charge. I that thought that, okay, where I put that is, was down below. Yeah, no, that's anything that has a formal referral vote referred to GOL is an automatic carryover. Okay. Can you not scroll? So... Let's just review what those are. We can go through that's, this. This is yeah. Just... That's the review process for developing the goals. That's the black reparations charge. Um, yes. So, so the measures that will be automatically so auto carried over carried. So that's the black reparations. Is it? Uh, and and it's. It's the review process, the black reparations, the um, charter review committee appointments, um, the nuisance Hang on. bylaw. Hang on, wait a minute. 
the so charge I'm, I'm, committee, I'm what, up. appointments? Yeah, I'm just, what exactly will GOL, we, we just um, review the committee description. We don't do the appointments, do we? I don't know. So I'd have to relook at the motion. This is where pulling the actual motions helps and and typing the motions into and, and putting the motions in the in this document helps. Okay. Uh, well, so whatever the motion for the Black Reparations Committee charge was, that should just be in here. Whatever the motion for, I think lighting, I think street lighting is now in here maybe, but maybe not. Um, it is. It should be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, this hasn't been referred to GOL. Yeah. I thought it had been, but go ahead. Take no, it. I don't think it has. So that would be an item that could be carried over or should be. Okay. And it's, I believe that's listed there. So that can come out. And, and if charter, depending on what the motion for charter review committee appointments is, that should probably be a, it might need to be under items that should be carried over or whatever that third set is. Um, subjects of discussion, but not those issues that have been discussed, things like that. Um, that one might need to be in there because that's gonna need started soon after the council starts. But we might need a motion that CRC, that, that GOLs, the council might need a motion that GOL will do those appointment recommendations but it should be in here so it's not lost. Waste hauler. Oh yeah, waste hauler. No, did we actually vote on establishing a waste hauler? No. No, but, no so. No, 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 but Pat, when. No. The, under our rules, when a bylaw is referred to a committee for substantive discussion, gotcha. it is automatically referred to GOL2 for review of cons clarity, consistency, and actionability. Gotcha. So it's part of these referrals that get carried over. But if it never got, you it doesn't get recommended back to the council. It's after TSO makes a recommendation right. for changes to the bylaw, it comes to GOL. And I think that was included in the referral to yes, it TSO. Was. It was to TSO with input from finance and then after and to, then to GOL, yeah. right. Jen? I just have a question. Let's say TSO was not going to recommend a bylaw, then it wouldn't come to GOL. Right, but the, we don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. I'm so. just saying any, not just waste taller, but. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 But for now, it's a carryover item because it comes okay. to GOL for yeah. the motion. And yeah, it, it, there was a motion that tasked okay. GOL with that review. Is there any change for measures that will not be carried over? I don't think so. Those and are all the items that we've referred out with a no vote. Yeah. I think waste tall is two words. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It can... When, when the, um, when we add now, the motion, the nuisance, we can fix the that. Nuisance property been, it hasn't been referred yet, or has it? But those upcoming bylaws for review are, are, should be up in that automatically carried over, right? They don't need, they don't need to be oh, here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are yeah, I mean, okay. I see what I did. Okay. So I'm going to move all these to. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can clean. Yeah. Because some of them are already in the list. I think you should keep general bylaw 3.3 refuse and get rid of the other version. Done. Yeah. That's what I was just going to suggest. Yeah. Anything else, Jen? <clears throat> no, that's why my suggestion was to okay. not call it waste hauler. Now, so then what <clears throat> goes in items that should be carried over? Uh, so that's, that's discussion. So that is that these would bylaws be. for confusion. I think these bylaws for future consideration or whatever that were referred to the manager go in here because that's okay. a here's something that might come, mm -hmm. right? The evaluation process was a referral. Oh, sorry, right? sorry. No, you're 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 right. I think that was a referral. It's um, here. 
But something like the goals discussion we just had that hasn't formally been referred, if we wanted to do something with, could be in here. Um, the rules of procedure um, are or should be carried over if, yep. if they need reviewed once a year or something. Um, and we haven't finished, so that's, you know. Yeah. And we what we had talked about, if I remember correctly, is finishing the changes um, and then figuring and then reporting to the new council and letting them make final decisions, which could be weird, but that's fine too. Um, so outside standing items are those future consideration. I didn't have a feeling that, yeah, okay. Now this needs to be into Lynn today at noon. So is that possible for you to do, Athena, or do you want me to take it back with these changes and then? Um, it's not going to come to the council until December 18. Oh, OK. I think Lynn wanted. Lynn wanted a discussion on the 4th to have all the drafts of these. Oh, right, right. A discussion on the 4th. But we, it doesn't need to be final until the 18th. OK, so, so so the committee will have another opportunity to, to look at these. Um, but I'll send it to you so you can add, if you want to add motions before you send it to me and Lynn for the packet on Monday. Okay, so would you do me a favor and send me this uh, this version that we just did and then I'll update and send Should to we, Do we take this out, outstanding items? Because this is... Yeah. Yeah. I think that works as a draft. Okay. Anything else that should be added or? Um, so. Um, Michelle had some language for the um, ABRC. Um, so in the past, some committees have put like a discussion, you know, what what the committee, a summary of the committee's discussion so far, so that a new GOL isn't starting from scratch. Um, so would you like me to paste in what Michelle? You're muted. I muted because Carol came in for a moment. And that um, it would be useful here too, because the committee's had extension, extensive discussion about this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I think you put the motion in and then you do a little bullet point of where the committee stands on each one. I mean, a sort of status slash discussion. Okay. Can we look at Michelle's materials? Um, yeah. So. Um, what Michelle sent was kind of a, wasn't as much of the GOL conversation. Well, hmm. Does that need to be in there? So. It's background. Um, okay, that's fine. But, the, but it, it might be helpful to have a summary of the committee's discussion, which is what had been done in the past. Well, uh, we, we haven't really discussed. We started discussing it. It's been referred to us, but we've we are saying uh, we have decided that it's basically that it's complex enough that we want to carry right. it. Over. And and some of this that it is understood by the current council that the chosen structure should ensure that I'm not sure the council had that discussion. We no, we did not. We have yeah. Should I take this out? Yeah. 
Okay. Or should we send it back to Michelle for? We... Well, this new, yeah. this, this draft will, will have an opportunity. The committee will have an opportunity to work on this some more. I think it could add, I, I think that's a good sort of start, but focuses much more on the report that came to the council than where GOL's discussions, yeah. where our status is. Right. Yeah, this is like background, but not the GOL discussion. Right. So if so, it, I don't so know if we want to keep it in, but we could title that if we wanted to keep it in background and then another bullet point that says GOL status. Yeah. And basically. It's sitting at legal review right now with some legal questions right. Right? so one legal review also there is the discussion about whether or not it should be a separate committee or integrated into another committee um that has not been completed and there's also the discussion as to i think part of what was brought up was is this adopting all recommendate if we put this committee in and some of the content of the charge, would that in effect adopt the whole report? So like there's there's been, we mentioned some discussion about what is the committee's charge and how does that have an effect on adoption of the report or not? Just, I, I'm not sure I worded that right, but there were certain, some languages in the charge that indicated if we adopted the charge, the council would be going forward and supporting all recommendations in the report. And we're not, that's because we haven't really had a discussion of the whole thing. So we're not right. sure. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's some of the questions we brought up about reviewing this charge. And we've been trapped uh, in different ways because we haven't paid attention when we've been looking at things and then, and then the expectation, and it's reasonable that there's an expectation that it's all accepted because we haven't as a council really necessarily done that. Oh, clearly enough. Jen, how are you doing on this one? Can we get, uh, um, are we making a motion? Not right now. I don't yeah, think you okay. need to so, yet. All right, can we scroll down to the <laughs> town manager goals and the status? And basically we are, we are GLL discussed Having a um, council council retreat. Go ahead. What were you were going to say? Because uh, I don't. This is that my, two year goals. Establish priorities within that two slash five year goals. Because Paul changed it at afterwards to two to or five year goals. And it was also set priorities within the goals. Yeah. And then. Oh wait. The referral also requires, you know, we haven't had a discussion, right? But but the new GOL will have to discuss right. the timing part and all. Yeah, and that's not, there's no time for that this year, but uh, timing of it and yeah. Would we recommend that that discussion occur sooner or later? I've found sometimes having recommendations of when things need to happen, like like, like the first quarter of the year? Yeah, versus yeah. the second quarter. And are like, we talking about, yeah. Start with of these carryovers type things. Okay. Great. Um, sorry, I couldn't type and listen at the same time. What What do you want me to add here? Uh, and if, and do I need to change anything that I put in? Oh, um, I think we were talking about the timing of the evaluation and the extent of the evaluation. That's part of the referral, but um, GOL hasn't had that discussion, but the new GOL will need to discuss that. And then I was saying, should we, within all of these, recommend sort of the first couple of agendas or something, what should be taken up for second or third right. thing? Um, 
Um, so you're saying GOL should take these items up early in the calendar year. I would say in the first half of the year. I yeah, I think it actually should be the first quarter. But I think it should be the first quarter too. Yeah. First quarter is fine. Because yeah, the whole thing is we don't want it all conflated the way it is now. Okay, yeah. is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Charter review appointments, committee appointments, status. Well, that, that would need to be the first quarter of the year. Um, the status is that the council will need a motion on who is making recommendations. And then if it's to GOL, GOL will need to make the recommend. We'll need to, we'll be advertising it. We've taken care of that part. The bulletin board notice is out. GOL will need to move swiftly on the rest of the policy for making recommendations mm -hmm. on that. And I would say that's the first quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. And appointments should be capitalized. That's minor. We all right with that? And let's go down. Um, and then Pat, when if you're doing if you're pulling in the motions, then we should just we should change this if it's a, if the council already made a motion. If that was already part of the council's, motion. I don't remember. Did Neither do I. I don't know. Was. It was. I don't. I don't remember. If it was not, it should go on the first or first agenda for the new council, or the the first business meeting agenda, because I think the council is going to meet what on January second, and then also on the eighth or something. Yeah. Or the second's just the swearing in and the. And the due dates. Okay. Um, I so I think those, the upcoming bylaws for review, you can simply just say when other committees finish their recommendations, GOL yeah. will need to take up a review of clarity, consistency, and actionability, something like that. Because none of the these are all clarity, consistency, actionability yep. items. Completely. Yeah. Anything else? You okay, Jen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just looking at, uh, I'm going to have to get, a, I have something at 12, but that's 15. What time is it? Uh, 11.45. Oh, hi, Lynn. <laughs> Almost done with the carryover. I think so, we're probably close enough to call it a draft. I'm just trying to see if I can find quickly the vote on the Charter Review Commission. So we are a committee. Yeah, so I thought we, we can, voted on it, but. I thought so too. I just want to see if I can yeah, do this voted. so we can fix it now. We did vote on it. But the, I don't know what um, the vote was. If if it was to um task GOL with actually make um D it, it was probably nine eleven. The appointment wait uh, to refer development. Part. I found it to refer de development of the bulletin board notice and CAF. Uh, the appointment process will begin with this council vote continue to the next so GOL hasn't been tasked so th should this move to um because there hasn't been a motion to recommend appointments so should this be moved to items that should be carried carried over instead of yes. automatic carryover yes yeah because we've done the the part that was referred to us right right exactly yeah yeah right we could even potentially recommend a motion for the council to take up on its first meeting. Yeah, that's it. Um, 
Um, so is that something that's going to go on a GOL agenda before December 18? Yeah. Would this GOL want to make a recommendation for the council to take up a motion to refer the appointment process for Charter Review Commission to GOL? Yeah. At the first meeting? So then we should put it on our next agenda. Um, the 13th. They could be on the 13th, right? Um, that should be on a GOL agenda to talk about and discuss on the 13th and then it can be on on the 18th so either can... on the 18th for this council to vote or on january 8th for the next council to vote all right and i'm gonna um pause us for a brief second when are you finished when you're finished athena i just want to pause for a second to call for public comment. And we don't have anybody. Right, I know. That's why, but I have to officially okay, just I didn't know if you were looking. Yeah. And it's adjourned. Okay. <laughs> public comments, excuse me. Public comment is finished. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I was, I was able to come back in. Could I Thank suggest you. that since the four or five of us are the critical number that needs to set a date that we try to do this quickly by looking at our calendars we're not there yet lynn okay okay let's scroll down are there any relevant documents missing i took out uh, public forums because we don't hold i don't believe we hold them as gol i see you know so I, I think you've got them. I have one requested addition for this memo. Oh, what is it? Which is attachments. Um, I'm not sure. I, I have to think to see. I think the ARBC charge needs attached because that one's been formally referred to uh, us. Okay. Um, yes, you're right. So any documents that have been formally referred. I don't think like attaching nuisance or lighting or anything is relevant at all. But for those upper referrals, the manager goals, um, the evaluation process, all of those documents should probably be attached to the memo. That makes sense. Um, so this would be attached the... I think the, the goals we adopt and then uh, Lynn's always created like a timing document or something it was in our packet for GOL probably in August or something. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you, you can, oh you mean the calendar for the, the calendar uh, for the evaluation and all something yeah. like that to help the next committee do this timing issue uh, in fact i i can give you kind of the packet that it might even be useful to have the whole packet that we give to the council for the first meeting on when we discuss yeah. town manager evaluation but they um, should be attached to this as documents. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's a great, you know, both ideas are good. And, ideas. Then, and the, then this the one charge. Wait a minute, Mandy. Yeah. You're going to say. I was going to say the committee charge when we were talking about charter review committee appointments, that charge could probably be attached. So I think I put a note in. Yeah. yeah. You did. Oh, the charter review. I'm sorry. The charter review one. Not yeah, yeah, that sorry, one. Sorry. Attach that charge. Do we want motions that sent this to us? That's um, what, yeah, I have notes in to include okay. the motions. Okay. We need to do that. Thanks. I'll just do this so that. Yeah, and then Athena, if you could send it to me and to Lynn, then she'll have it by 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> this Which is the draft. <laughs> um, should we include? The motions for these. Why did I need it by 12 o'clock? I don't know. I have a thing that you did, Lynn. Graphs. An email. Oh, that's right. The email I sent to you. <laughs> yeah, occasionally that's okay, I have emails. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> Athena, I think it would be good to include those motions. Okay. Um, yeah. Pat, I don't know if I can if I can help you hunt those down today. Uh, I can hunt down. We can do that later, but I just want a copy of what this 
uh, to me and to Lynn. One. Is it okay to leave it like this for, Absolutely. Uh, for Monday? Because it's a draft. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. It, it, the council can absolutely see this the way it is. Okay. Now I want to, yeah, are we, I think we're finished with that. Yeah. Do we need to vote on it or anything? I don't know. No, think. not yet. The one thing I want to say is, uh, Kathy, Shane, Jen, you sent stuff, but I think we incorporated your stuff yes. as we were working. We incorporated Mandy's. Kathy, Shane, last minute yesterday sent me a big long list I'm going to go through and I will see what once I have this, um, the other document, um, the, so send me that also, the uh, amended manager goal thing. Uh, I will look and see because she's going to have to bring them up at uh, a council um, meeting. At a council meeting, I think, because of when, but I'll look and see what we've already done. We may have done some of the things that she's talking about. Yeah, it might be wise when you're writing the report on the manager goals to, if you look at what she's done when we talked about, oh, but that's included in X goal here to address some of that so that she sees how we might have, why we might not have put her specific language in. If 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 we did address some of the stuff she talked about, right? You know, when talking about the pilot payments or something saying, well, we put that here, not here, you know, things like that. You're muted. Pat. Muted. Yeah, my phone was ringing. The um, the ones that were there, those she sent a little while ago, but she has sent a, a, a very <laughs> detailed um, version that I need to look at. And and Jen, I may be asking you uh, to also look. I'll write up the yeah. Report. Send it to me if you want me to. Look at yeah, it. that's it. That's helpful. Or you can write it, and I can look at what you did. Okay, but send me what she wrote. <laughs> Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> okay. So if I get sent the revised, you know what? If Athena can send me what we did, and then you send me Kathy's, I can. Okay, that would be stop. extraordinarily helpful to me today. Um, um, you, you I want, I want to say that publicly, Jen and I often go head to head, but that there's, I think, and I know. That there's real respect between us and stuff, and I really appreciate your willingness. And to... I really enjoy your company. You're very. Did I, you did always I? make me laugh. Um, <laughs> but does Lynn need that by twelve? When do you need this? That's what she said. No, I not said. no, no, not Kathy's thing on the evaluation. Okay. No, the memo, the carryover, the transition memo. Okay. That's what she wanted by noon. And she <laughs> she six minutes. Get it, get get it four, to her. One minute, so I have four minutes to do it. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're going to come up with. A new meeting time for next week. Yeah. Oh, right. Can yeah. I can I just start by suggesting an idea like November? I'm sorry, December, December fifth. Anytime um, available. I'm fine with a typical time on the fifth of nine thirty. Okay. Um, I can do that. Nine thirty. I would have a very hard stop because I'm supposed to be at the survival center unusually, um, but I could shift that somewhat. Um, so Tuesday the fifth at. Can nine we do 30. nine? Can we do nine? I have a stop at eleven. Yeah, uh, nine to eleven. Seven to Tuesday the fifth. But the fifth nine to eleven that works. I can do that. I can and do it too. Okay, and I can do it. And, you, you know, know we, we will have had a council meeting the night before. Oh, I'm Are sure it'll be a quick on one. the seventh in the morning. Yes. Yes. But let me look. Let no. me look. Let me look. No. Okay. I think no, not... I could do the afternoon on the seventh. On the seventh. Uh, uh, I could do the afternoon do... seventh. I, I don't know doing do... a nine o'clock after the council meeting. Um, I don't either, but I could do yeah. like three o'clock on the uh, on the seventh. I can't. I can't. I have a mobile market meeting at four thirty. Yeah. I could be there for part of the time. I, and I'm busy from ten to two thirty. Friday morning. Friday morning. It would have to be between nine and eleven. I can do nine to eleven on Friday morning. I can okay. too. I can. Okay. Did, oh, Athena, did that was a you can. Oh, all right. So and somebody not, has to check with Michelle, but we don't need her for a quorum. Right. Are we doing nine or nine thirty? Nine to eleven, because I have the survival center 
that I need got to be it. by 1130. And that... I am good with that. And I'm glad we got that set. Yeah. And sometimes in the morning, I have to run away. Uh, my body is fooling around. Uh, so, Jen, if that happens, yeah, yeah, we'll just flip in and out. Yes, it's I'm very happy not to have it in mind. And it could be a long council meeting on the 4th. Yeah. I'm sure I... it's going to be a quick one. <laughs> We're going to keep our, our oh, ever the optimist. I think she's drunk. <laughs> Let me put it this way. You could all contribute to it being. <laughs> you can make the annual report stay to the town address like five minutes, Lynn. That'll oh, help. I'm trying agreed. to keep it to 20. We have agreed to no more than 20 total. And we're not doing library or school committee. We're not. No, It'll, they have their they, annual report. Oh, oh, they're not. In the packet, yeah, they're but not they're not we are voting on the library, correct? And no. Mandy Joe, if I can get it to seven, I will. <laughs> I'll say it. I, All right, as usual. Totally. This is a great team. Thank you. Um, all right. Okay. And Tina, you're going to send uh, me, Lynn, and, and Jen the, the different updates. Um, I'll send you the carryover, the draft carryover memo and the town manager goals voted by GOO. Yes. Anything else, anybody? Yeah. No, and you'll send me Kathy's email. Athena, will oh, you yes, I'll do that right away. Athena, will you be in the office at one? Um, for a gender review? Yeah, yeah, I'll be here. Okay, I'll see you then. In okay. The Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Are we adjourned? We're adjourned officially at <laughs> 11.58 a.m. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye.